we're doing a little infomercial commercial guys on our Facebook um, group, as you all know. So welcome everyone. Happy Tuesday. Thank you so much, Ms. Vanity, Kara, Ivan, Toby, um, and the Scottsdale crew is probably the whole crew behind her. Um, Sir Eddie and David, thanks for on today's bootcamp and everyone watching on Facebook Live. But as you all know, we do have our bootcamp every Tuesday and today we're gonna dive deep into the MLS. So if you're watching this recorded later or you're watching this on the Academy, it's very important to know how to use the MLS. It is a tool, one, we pay for every year. And then two, that is the most important information that we need to share with our clients. So it's very important how to use it. A quick little tip and reminder, we do have um, in the MLS, there's a little spot in the corner. If you click on help, they have an internal academy. So the MLS does do trainings. They do coffee breaks, um, I believe bi-weekly, once a month. I've joined in on some of their coffee breaks. They do do emails regularly on updates or changes that the MLS has done that you want to keep an eye out. David, our designated broker does send out a lot of broker tips and he's typically on top of it and he will let you know just in case you missed it but if you don't know what email you use when you first register with the MLS I would highly suggest going into your settings and checking because a lot of those updates and reminders are golden nuggets and very important to know um, but again you have David to kind of help if you for any reason you miss some of their emails because it kind of gets mixed up with like junk mail so that's the only th side effect about some of those MLS emails but Without further ado, Josh, our director of talent, is going to get this boot camp started on how to use the MLS. Josh, it's all yours. All right. Thank you so much. Well, like Melissa said, welcome, Best Home agents and all agents who are tuned in via Facebook uh, to just get a, a little crash course on the MLS. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. All right, can you guys hear me? All right, perfect. So um, as Melissa was saying, the MLS is a really cool support, um, live support tab right here. So if you just go into live support um, or you can come over here into help, if you click this little down arrow into help, you can see that they have Flex Academy video training, uh, Flex MLS help. So this here will be a deep dive, but um, you know, I could spend hours and hours going over everything that the MLS has to offer. Uh, but, you know, we're going to keep this nice and short and sweet because I know that you guys have a busy day today. But again, this is here for your help. OK, so if you guys ever get stranded or um, if you don't know what to do, this here is definitely going to be a tool for you. So so come to help. You got Flex uh, Academy video training and contact support. Um, so when you log into the MLS, armls.flexmls.com, I recommend that you guys bookmark that, okay? Because a lot of the times you'll just put flexmls.com. It will take you over into a whole different place where you can subscribe to your Supra and, um, and to the MLS. And you just want to really come into armls.flexmls.com. Bookmark that so you just have a very easy one shot. So you can see here, that this is your dashboard, kind of your home screen. So if I go on to home, uh, this is what this is what comes up. So um, a lot of the new agents that come over into Best Homes that were with other brokerages, I see that their dashboard is completely just out of sync. I mean, they have all of this stuff, save searches, you know, contacts, messages. They have all of this stuff over here. And what I tell people is, unless you want to drive yourself crazy, keep it simple. Okay, save searches over here. You can easily go into your save searches and I'll teach you how to do that and why we do that. Okay, your new search over here and then your listings. Okay, so you can have all of your information right here where you can just go into uh, a very, you know, seamless transition. So um, I always start by asking our agents 
you know, to really eliminate everything that we possibly can. So if you see up here, I have quick search, I have hot sheet, contact management, my messages, market summary and transaction desk. These are the ones that I use on a daily basis, okay? Now, how do, how do you get these to be up here? So if you click into your menu, you see these gold stars? Those allow you to have these very quick and easy, seamless little buttons up here, okay? So if I simply just click off of, if I click off of the gold star, see, my quick search goes away. But then if I add the gold star, my quick search is right here. And then you can slide, you can slide it over and it's just gonna stay there. Um, but what you can do is you can just gold star all of all of the you know important ones that are really going to help you out. And uh, quick search obviously is a number one. Your contact management, I would have up there for sure. And I would have transaction desk because you can simply just click on transaction desk and now it takes you there. So if anyone doesn't know what transaction desk is, this here is where we have all of our forms. Okay, this is where your all your contracts are going to be in the transaction desk. Uh, so when you hit this menu, you get a whole entire menu, you know, uh, menu here. So uh, daily functions, your statistics add and change okay we'll get into this here in a second contact management products searches and your taxes and preferences okay um, so like i said just keep it nice and simple just have your top ones up here gold starred if you have a lot up here just go next to your gold star just unclick it and it will disappear okay um, so i would start as soon as this boot camp is over go over there and make your preferences known okay so the MLS, like I said, is a tool to where you can search for homes. That's the benefit of being a real estate agent. And that's the benefit of putting your home on the MLS is because it, it blasts out to 52,000 agents. Okay. Um, so over here, uh, status, if you just click on this box, you can drop down and you can either highlight active uh, UCB is under contracts, under contract, but it, it is accepting backups. And then you have a CCBS, which is a contract contingent on buy or sell. Okay. Um, so you can search automatically. It will have active and coming soon. All right. If you want to highlight multiple boxes, you just hold the command down and you can pick as many boxes as you want. All right. So we always search active and coming soon. Uh, your list price. You know, very, very self-explanatory dwelling type, dwelling styles, city. So you can search by city and, and town. So you can put surprise in here and you can make sure that you're uh, doing surprise only, um, or you can you know type in multiple cities. It, it does not matter. Uh, just remember that you can search by cities. Um, I think it's a good way to, uh, to look at, at an overall, general uh, area. So if I'm, you know, trying to sell or market or specialize in surprise, I'm always going to go up to surprise and I'm going to say, you know, what is going on with my target city that I want to focus in on? You know, what's the actives in surprise? What's the pinning in surprise? What's the close? So now whenever I go to a listing appointment or I'm meeting with a buyer, I can say, hey, based in surprise in the past 30 days, this is the this is the snapshot. So I always do that in the morning. I always look to see kind of what's going on, what's changing in your particular area that you want to be a master of. And like I said before, always pick an area that you guys can just focus in on and become that professional of that area. So it will be active coming soon of, let's just say surprise, okay. So I know that there's 951 active and coming soon homes in the town of Surprise, okay? Um, so you can come down here, you can search zip codes. If you have a certain person and you're gonna see this zip code come into play, there's a specific zip code and I'm gonna show you here on the map. It's where Phoenix stops and Scottsdale starts. It's like 85024 or something like this. It's right, right around in here. People will buy to be on the Phoenix side because of the taxes and because it's cheaper homes, but they're so close, they get the benefits of Scottsdale, okay? 
Um, so if you meet people like this, you know, you can search a certain zip code or they have to be in a zip code for a school. You can do zip code or you can, you can search a uh, school code. Okay. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways that you can search and um, the bedrooms, bathrooms, square foot, interior levels. I get, I, I get asked a lot of times the number of interior levels. If you're looking for a single story, put max one here. Okay. All right. So that will show us all the single story homes. You know, you can do year built, you can do subdivision. So if you want to take out the city, you can search subdivision. Um, let's just say Marley Park, for instance, it's out in surprise. Okay. So now I know that there's 30 active or coming soon homes in Marley Park, and you can see it's right here. Um, I use Surprise as an example because I live in Surprise. I know everything there is to know about Surprise. Don't let this be an example for your specific area. You can do, if you're on the east side, you can do, you know, Power Ranch, Seville, East Mark. If you're in, you know, Scottsdale, you can do DC Ranch. Uh, you could do it, any of those wherever you are. Um, I don't know a lot about Goodyear, uh, Litchfield Park, maybe. Um, I, I'm not sure, but you guys get the point. Uh, off market date, you can do carport, garage spaces, and then this kind of gets into um, particulars, pools, special listing conditions. Now the, now the funny thing is when you're searching for a pool and you guys probably notice this, that you, you see this or, well, you, you have to click the or one time and then you have to click it again. And then that's gonna change the or from a not to an and, and that is going to be a private pool. I get this question asked a lot too. How do I search for pools? All right, so it's kind of it's kind of weird, but you're just going to come to this or if they do not want to pull, put not. If they do want to pull, make it and 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 you just you just click on it. That's all you do, and it changes. So that's how you search a pool. Now, uh, special listing conditions. Okay, this is going to be like you know pre foreclosures, auctions, LEOs. You don't really need to to play around with this unless you want to see like an age restriction home, you know, 55 plus. If you guys have snowbirds, out of towners, they want to be in 55 plus, you can click in your age restrictions. And of course, there's not going to be any in Marley Park. Um, it's not a 55 plus community, but uh, you can see that if I do a age restriction with a pool comes up 111 homes and you can see kind of where the 55 plus communities are throughout the valley here. So always make sure that if you don't wanna search that again, that you just eliminate that blue check mark or if you do click in here that the blue check mark is added because that makes a big difference. Sometimes you'll make adjustments to your search and then this blue check mark is not checked. And if it's not checked, it's not going to apply to what you're trying to search, okay? Um, a big thing is ad field. A lot of the times, you know, and these are realtors, you got to understand who are doing these descriptions. So whatever is in the MLS, I always recommend that you drive out to the property if you're looking for something very specific, because these are realtors or these are companies like Lister Assister or other companies that are inputting this data. Okay. It's not going to be 100% right all of the time. And sometimes you'll see this with a den, they're classifying it as a bedroom, but when you show up, there's no closet there. So you say, this is no bedroom. Now it has a potential for a bedroom, but right now as it sits, a den is a den, it's not a bedroom without a closet, all right? You might see this RV gate, you know, and you get there and it's a five foot gate and you're like, I can't drive a car through there, you know, but they're classifying that as an RV gate, okay? so. So just remember that any type of special thing that your client is looking for, you can find that by adding a field in here and you literally can go through this and you can really just tone in on exactly what they're looking for. But keep in mind, I would drive out to the property and just, just make sure just double, you know, double um, verify that that's actually what they're looking for. So a lot of agents come to me and they say, hey, Josh, I want to schedule an open house. Um, I don't know how to do that. So 
Uh, what I always say is if you come over here into menu, come over here into our, our office listings, okay? And you can see our office listings. This is everything that we have as the office. Now, if there's something in there that does not work for you, okay? You can, you can call an agent and say, hey, I would love to sit your property open. And what I, what I tell our agents is, if you're going to do that, make sure that you come over here, you add a field and you search vacant, okay? So you can search a vacant home because you all know as well as I do, if you go to try to sit in an open house and it's owner occupied, the chances of you sitting in that open house are going to be very slim if it's during the weekday or the weekend. So you come over here, and let's just say I want to search a vacant home that's active and it's a four bedroom, it's a two bathroom, it's minimum 1500 square foot, maximum 2000. Um, let's change this to a three bedroom because I'm looking for a first time home buyer. This is a perfect little scenario here. And let's just do city, I'll do surprise. Okay, so now and list price, you know, I really I'm trying to tone in on those on those first time home buyers. So let's cap this at 550. All right. So I know that in surprise, there's active three bed, two bath in between 1500 and 2000. That's vacant. I know that there's 151 results. All right. So now if I even want to to, um, you know, kind of narrow this down even more list price, let's go ahead and change that zero. Let's do let's do 350 so we can weed out all the all the ones that are abandoned and, and need a lot of rehab and help okay so look at this guys so now all of these homes are vacant and surprise okay um some of these are new build spec homes you're probably not going to sit in an open house but what i'm just trying to say is you can search this if they're vacant homes and now you can really tone in and see exactly where you want to have an open house so special listing conditions are, are very cool. Uh, out of field, like I said, will help you narrow down to exactly what your buyers are looking for, okay? So um, you can do it by lot size. So approximate lot uh, acres or lot square footage. Um, if you do acres right here, you know, pro approximate lot acres and the list goes on and on and on. So um, this is how you can do it. Golf course lot, waterfront lot, um, this is how you can really tone in and narrow down exactly what you're looking for. Okay. And um, that is, that is pretty much how you search for specific items on the MLS. Now let's just go ahead and we're going to reset this and I'm going to show you how to use tools on the MLS. So if, if we close this out and we say um, our buyers are looking for some type of area, um, you know, let's just say next to their next to their school for their kids' school. So if you double click on the map, it will zoom in. Um, but you also have these icons over here. Now, what do these all do? Okay. So this one right here that that it, it allows you to draw a little specific area. So if you guys don't know, you can come over here. You can click one time on the map, and you can draw this to wherever you want. Okay. You can. It, as long as you just keep clicking on it, okay, you can really do, you know, whatever you want. You can draw whatever you want to do, okay? So if I'm going to draw this little area, it's going to yield me 88 homes. If you don't want this polygon anymore, if you say, oh, shoot, I made a mistake, just come over here, exit that out, and it's going to reset you back, okay? Now, once you start to know the valley, Let's just say someone is looking in surprise, but you want to weed out Sun City, okay? Because they don't want 55 plus. You're going to draw it down on Bell here, okay? And then you're kind of, kind of come over here and then you're going to come up over here and then come up over here, right? So now we take away Sun City. And then now we can say, okay, now we have 313 homes um, by using that, that um, tool there, okay? So if we exit that and we say, all right, um, and this, I use this circle a lot for comps because uh, I can draw out one mile, two miles, and it tells you. So say I want to focus in on, you know, uh, the, the 303s being built. I know that right here, the 
the new Costco is and someone wants to live right by a Costco. So I, t I take my little circle, I touch one time on the map and then it lets you dry out, see? So if you look at that black box, you see 0.53. So now I know I'm a half mile. If I keep coming out, all right? So now I know I'm a mile and one, okay? Or, or one 1.1 1 .1 miles, all right? So now I just keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, so now I know that I'm at almost, oh, shoot, all right, two miles. So now I know that I'm two miles out. Okay, so, so this is what the circle allows you to do. It allows you to really focus in and tone in on how many miles or a specific circle. Okay, and there's 254 in there. And then of course, last but not least is, is the, the rectangle itself. Okay, this is just going to let you draw a, a big box. Um, so, you know, use these tools as, as a way to help you. And agents, I know some agents have came over here that only searched with these. And what I would do with these is I would not let this be your only search mechanism that you do because you're going to cut off a lot of areas. I mean, even if you just took this and you did like this and you said, oh yeah, they, they really want to, they really want to be right there. You know, maybe right here at this little corner is the house that your clients are going to end up buying. But since you cut it off, you, you didn't open it up, you know? So that's why I don't like to search with these tools because you're drawing a specific boundary line and you know it's just going to hurt yourself. Now, if your client says, hey, I don't want anything west of Reams. It's just no, nothing west of Reams. Yes, this tool is gonna be great because now you can draw that, that line there and cut it off. Um, but again, use your, use your towns Okay, search by your towns, you know, and then use these to, to narrow it down. So, you know, now we start big, we start to narrow down, no, start to narrow down, start to narrow down. And that's how you really get the best breakdown for your clients and you don't miss homes. Okay. Uh, so that's pretty much how you use these tools over here. Um, you can, you can do like, uh, address locator, um, things like that. But I don't really, I don't really ever play with these here. Uh, here's your status. So um, you can uh, update your color legend if you want. Um, I don't, I don't really play around with those very much. Um, this here, it lets you measure, um, you know, you, you can, you can do a, a measurement if you want. Oh. And then I don't know what this green thing does. Little box. Oh, let you let you kind of tone in on on the little box there. So um, focus in on on these three here. They they really help you out. Now, if you guys are doing uh, some type of oh, I'm still on it. <laughs> let's just, let's just, let's just click on this for a sec. All right, there we go. Cool. Um, if you guys are focused in on uh, doing land deals, uh, anything like that, and you, why did they go back to this? All right, anyways, I'm gonna figure this out, guys. Um, so if you guys, I'm just gonna shut this off. There we go. All right. Cool. All right. Uh, if you guys are, are doing like land deals or any anything like that, um, this tool is really cool, this overlays, and I'll show you here. So if I, if I tone in over here and I say, all right, my clients are looking up into this area and I, I'm going to do this map here like this, okay, three mile vicinity up here. Well, what you can do is you can come over here to overlays, right, and then you can come over here to FEMA flood zones and check this out. So now you can do an overlay. So if the client says, hey, I'm looking for a one acre parcel, but I don't want to be in a floodplain. And you say, oh, shoot, how do I find out if your house is in a floodplain or not? Boom. Do the overlays, come over here, and now you can see this. So now, now if you scroll in, if you scroll in, you're like, okay, well, I know that this one's not in one. This one's not in one. You know, this one it possibly is on one, okay? But you guys know that you know all of these would probably be in in a flood flood zone. Um, this one here, you know. So now, 
they have to pay, pay flood insurance and things like that. So, so these overlays are, are a really cool tool to help you uh, whenever you're trying to become the best you know, possible uh, agent for your buyers here. And you can do zip codes, guys. You can do map grids. Um, you can do a lot of these, but then they kind of get like, you know, you don't really need to put a map grid on there and stuff. Uh, so for the overlays, I really just use it for flood zones. It's, it, it's uh, really beneficial. Um, so uh, that's the, the nitty gritty on how you really uh, do a search. Okay, so let's say I have a I have a client that is looking for a three bedroom, two bath, 1800 square foot home, and I want to save a search. So I don't want to keep doing this. So if you hit active, uh, three bed, two bath, they're looking for 1800. So what, what I usually do is uh, I usually do 1700 to like 2000. All right. Um, and then they, let's just say they wanted a pool. So I said, okay, cool. And they wanted to be in uh, surprise farms. So they get two homes to choose from. All right. For this, for this, let's just say that they, they didn't, they didn't care if they wanted to pull or not. All right. So I got 11, I got 11 listings that is going to fit their criteria. Okay. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this search. And now you can either add as a, it, it as a new, a new search or an existing search if you already have these guys in there. So let's just say it's new. And I'm just going to say that this, the name of it is Surprise Farms. And here's a description. You can just, you know, whatever description you want, okay? And uh, do we want to add it as a contact? Sure, we'll add it for uh, Mr. Buyer, whatever the buyer's name is. And, and you can put an email in here. We'll just use mine, okay? Now, do you want to create a portal for this prospect? So a portal basically is, it allows them to go back in, save homes, uh, look at homes, uh, and really, this is kind of your communication tool back and forth. So you can see the ones that they like, what they didn't like, uh, things like that. Um, I always add a portal. Uh, I just think it's the best for your clients. Um, but a, a lot of people, you know, maybe you don't want a portal, maybe you do. It, it's really just up to you. I always do. Um, so I'll create a portal and um, I'll just save and add subscription. Okay. So now subscription is Surprise Farms. Send notification a new listing. So to me, I'm the sender and my contacts. Okay. And then send me with an email and contacts click on the link. This is huge because what this allows you to do is allows you to see when your client opened up these homes. So then when they open up the homes, now guess what? You call them. Hey, hey, Mr. Buyer, you know, did you get that list of homes I sent you? If they say yes, of course, you know that they opened it. If they say no, well, now you know they're lying to you. Okay. So it's kind of like a way that you can really fact check your buyers, but more importantly, hey, you already know that they opened that list, call them, get in front of them, follow up. Remember seven to like 12 follow-ups is needed before they'll buy. So don't be that agent that calls them twice, be that agent that calls them seven to like 12 times, okay? Just if you think you're doing too much, you're not. All right, so this here, remember what I said about being notified? whenever there's a status change, price reduction, okay? All right, so please choose a schedule for the subscription. I always do weekly, all right? So this here is what's, what, what happens is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all right, we're always getting notified of new homes that are coming on the market, new price change, price reductions, status changes, things like that, okay? And it's automatically going to email them. Now, when you're out, let's just say you're out doing an open house or you're out showing homes or you're out on a listing presentation, right? The MLS is working on your behalf and sending these people, your buyers, Mr. Buyer, uh, homes, okay? And then you, you click save, okay? So now it will say, do you want to email these listings now? Choose listings to email or do not send listings at all, all right? So um, you guys can choose either one of those and then just dismiss that. Now, I'm a big person that doesn't email a lot of properties. And here's why. My neighbor 
had a list emailed to her for like nine or 10 months and every single home she liked, she came right over to me and said, Hey, Josh, I really like this home. Some agent put her on some drip campaign, kind of like this, right? I gave her a portal and just, just kept emailing her homes. Never, ever called her, never followed up with her. Fast forward, you know, 10 months later, she was always going to use me. She was our neighbor for years and years and years. And she, and you know, our kids are best friends. But moral of the story is somebody else is doing the work for you. And then, so if you put yourself in her shoes, you're emailing properties left, right, you know, email properties, email properties. What's to say that they're not going to take those properties and go up with their brother or their cousin or anybody who they know. So be the true professional. You know, if you meet them at an open house, yes, send them a, send them a list, follow up with them. Hey, I sent you that list. If you're doing cold outreach, hey, did you get those CMAs I sent you? Yes, this is this is great. But don't let this be your only communication tool to where you just email properties left and right. And then those clients are now taking your properties and going off to somewhere else and they're getting to the sell. Okay. I want to see you guys use this as a way to where you can communicate and come off professionally to your buyers, not just let this be the only tool possible. Okay. So now what happens? is you can either come over here back into menu and you can come over here to um, my saved, um, where are they? Uh, save searches. So you can come right over here. So it's under search, save searches. Now you can click on that. And here is where they're going to, they're going to populate, right? So now you can go over here, you can click it. And guess what guys? It brings us right back to what we're doing. Now, let's say the buyer says, you know what? I actually changed my mind. I didn't want to be in Surprise Farms anymore. I wanted to be you know, somewhere else. Okay, so you can just come over here and you can just edit this and then just save it again, okay? So it allows you to, to manipulate this, this search profile to whatever your clients are really looking for. So now uh, there is one way to find your searches over here under menu save searches but you can also just come to your home and then that's why i said guys it's right here save searches now we have surprise farms so now when we come in here we can just go right here so if your dashboard here it looks all funky just start eliminating everything to make it really easy okay um, so that's how you uh that's how you save a search you can access that search and then now they have a portal set up okay and then the portal will look kind of like this it will look a little bit different, but it allows them to save homes and you guys can really communicate through that portal, okay? Now, let's say that we didn't, we didn't save this as a search yet. We're just sending out a list of homes, okay? All right, so we'll just use the same search criteria. I just met Mr. Buyer at an open house. I said, hey, Mr. Buyer, thank you so much for coming in. As promised, I'm going to send you this list or as promised, here's the list in your inbox. You know, I know that you want a 3 to 1800 square foot home in Surprise Farms. Great news is I found 11 properties. Now we're going to come right over here to our email. So we are going to go email interactive version. It lets them interact with the photos, the map. All right. If they are contact in your MLS, then you can go ahead and enter their name. If not, you're going to just have to go ahead and enter their um, email address. Okay. So in this, in this case, we'll use mine, All right? Send, send a copy to me. Yes. Notify me when they view this page again, very important. Okay. So now, you know, when they viewed it, All right? So now listings, uh, in surprise farms and then Mr. Buyer, you know, it was a pleasure to meet you, blah, 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 you know, and then now whenever you go ahead, you can email this. Now, if you come over here, you see all results are current, current listings. So if you just want to email a one-off, you can click one. But if you want to click you know, three or four or five that you selected, that's where you're gonna have selected. Or if you wanna email them all, you can do all. Now you can, you know, how are they gonna view this? Okay, residential view residential rental and we'll get into this for a second but more importantly or probably about 99 percent of the time you're going to do residential view 
here's their detail. Here's the report history, all of this stuff here, open houses, documents, photos, and then here's your business card. Go ahead and just put email, okay? So now your email, the link was mailed to, oh, I don't know why it came to my personal one, but um, it's because it's I have it linked to the MLS. So this here is going to be whatever email address you have linked to your uh, MLS, okay? So then they're going to get that email. You're also going to get a copy and then you're going to get an email notified whenever they open that, okay? Which is, which is really, really cool. So um, if we come back over here to quick search, I showed you guys how to search residential homes. What happens if you have a renter? Okay, this doesn't work because you have, it's a rental, it's not, they don't wanna buy. So you just come up to this black residential and you click one time. See how it help pulls down a little list? We come to residential rental. Guess what, guys? Now here's all the renter, rental houses in the Valley. Okay, what's, what's your lease payment? Dwelling type, still the same, same stuff, but now we're just searching residential rental, okay? So if someone's looking for a rental, let's just say in Scottsdale, all right? Um, so we'll just put active coming soon. And then we'll, in city, we'll put Scottsdale. If I could spell. All right, so there's 1,610 rentals available in Scottsdale. So if we take our little tool over here and I, I know, all right, I know that they wanna be in North, Scottsdale. I'm going to take my tool, smack dab in the heart, and I'm going to draw it out like this, right? So now I know that in my little circle, I have 644 rentals up in here, okay? So this is how you just use your tool. So what I did is I searched, I searched by city town, and then I narrowed it down by my tools instead of just using my tools, okay? So what, what about if they want land? Okay, you come over here, you click on that again, and now you put land. So now we can we can search this price, parcel size, all right? How many acres are they wanting? Are they just wanting are they wanting a whole acre to two to two point five acres? There's eighteen forty in the valley. Okay, so and everybody knows that the valley most most of your acres are going to be up in here, over in here, and then down over here into Queen Creek area, whoops. Um, but like I said, wherever they're looking, you know, this is how you do that. Now, if they wanna do commercial, you get a commercial over here, multiple dwellings over here. So this is how you navigate the MLS into residential land, renters, the whole nine yards. Now you say, Josh, what do I do? How do I add a listing in here? Well, that's a great question. So you come over here, and again, it's menu, and then you add listing, okay? So now when you add your listing, what type of listing is it? Residential, you know, whatever the topics that we just we just did, renter, uh, land, it's gonna be residential. It's always going to populate your information here. And is there a co-lister? If there is a co-lister, you're gonna put them there, okay? And then now when you're adding, an, when you're adding a, listing, you're going to have the MLS profile sheet that is signed by your sellers, okay? That is going to be your outline for this. So address, put all your information in here, main fields, okay? This is going to be, again, on your MLS profile sheet that you have signed before you even start this process. Here's going to be all of your details. All right. Here's going to be your rooms. Now, here's the cool thing about this. I don't expect you guys on your listings to pull out a tape measure and start measuring every single room and saying, oh, this is the dining room. It's 15 by 16. Here's the masters, 21 by 24. Okay. If you if you want to do that, you're more than more than welcome, you know, but you would just name them by the rooms. Okay. And then, you know, here's your broker uh, distribution. So um, as you know, our MLX is connected to the IDX, okay? So when you go out on a listing appointment, you know, you can let them know that, hey, guys, guess what? It's connected to the IDX and the IDX then distrib distributes it to all of these uh, different websites, okay? So that's how you add a listing. And you say, oh, okay, well, I added my listing. We're waiting for the 
pictures. We're waiting for everything else. Okay, that is going to be in my incomplete. So incomplete listings, because you added all your information, but it's not quite ready yet. You're going to save your information. Excuse me. You're going to save all of your information, but you're not going to publish it yet. It's not going to become active because you still have to add some things. So then if you come into a menu, my incomplete, this here is where your MLS number is going to be listed. You click on that MLS number, boom, and then it allows you now to pick up right where you left off. Okay. Now for it, for anything is if you need to do a price reduction, if you need to do a status change, if you need to do anything, that's where you're going to go into change listing. Okay. So now then you're going to click on your MLS number right here. And now you're going to be able to, to edit it. Okay. Now let's just say you put it into pending. It's not active anymore, but you need to go in there and change something. You click on the change list and you say, oh my gosh, where's my listing at? Remember, see this active? If you toggle down and you, and you say, oh yeah, yeah, I did put it in the pending. Okay, boom, now here it is, okay? So don't panic that it's like you can't find your listing. It's going to be in here. You just have to, to remember what, what the correct term is that you have it under, okay? So if you accept a contract, all the documents are signed, everything's good to go, you know, you can mark it in the pending, okay? Uh, if it's if you're waiting on uh, on documents or anything like that, uh, you can do uh, CCBS or UCB. Um, talk to David on that one. Exactly what you know he wants you guys to be marketing into that as, as you're waiting for documents. Um, so that that way, you know, we're doing everything right by uh, by what our broker requires us to do. Okay. Um, so that's uh, that's your listings your incompletes, okay? Um, you can come in, into super functions, but majority of the time, you're not gonna need to play around in that, all right? Uh, transaction desk, like I said, click on transaction desk through the MLS, and then it's going to have you put your nerds number in. Um, I get asked this a lot, how do I find my nerds number? Now, you can, you can find it a couple different ways. Um, through your association, they have your nerds number. Um, but if you come over here to your MLS, if you come up here to your initials, if you just come to my profile, if you look at your my profile, it's going to be right here. You can access your nerds ID number right here. Okay. And then of course, it's going to have your agency that you work with and your personal ID. So you click on your nerds number, get your nerds number over here, put your password in, and then now you're ready to rock and roll through your transaction desk. Once you click on that, it's gonna bring up here. Now, uh, zip forms, we used to use zip forms back in the day, but then they came out with transaction desk. I like transaction desk, so click on that. And then now you're into all of your documents, okay? So this is, this is where you're going to be able to come in here, you can create your transaction, and this will be a whole different training, a whole different boot camp, I believe, with your man, Lee. Um, is going to fully go over all of this stuff um, and and it'll be a deep dive into this because this here is a whole nother training course in itself um, so uh, but again I just want to let you know how you access transaction desk and that's again through menu and then um, down here under products so just to just to reiterate these gold stars will allow you to have all of your different um, quick buttons up here. And I, I tell this to you because every single agent that comes over that I get to sit down with and um, kind of just make life easier, they have, this is just full blown out. They have all these different bo box here, box here, box here, box here. And I said, man, you're all over the place. You know, all of these, nothing's here. They don't know what to do or where to go. So if I was you guys after the end of this boot camp, I would go and highlight these yellow stars. Quick search for sure. That should be your number one quick search. Okay. Transaction desk, market summary. Then you can see a whole entire market summary of the whole entire valley. All right. So, so make sure you do those. Um, so down here, we uh, covered your office listings. So again, if, if I'm looking at our office listings, you can go over here. This here is all the office listings for best homes. Okay. If I come back over here, company listings, if I want to say, you know, if I want to look up, you know, like uh, other companies and stuff like that, that have 
properties, you can look up. Now this here is my company, um, but then you can also look up uh, different offices, different members, um, different uh, real estate agents, I anybody who has you know listings, you can look up them as well. Then they're gonna be all right here. And then, um, and then again, like I said, save searches. Um, monsoons, uh, so monsoon is a tax records database where you can search uh, tax records. Uh, monsoon is a very good place to see, um, you know, seller's information. And I'll show you guys real quick uh, wh what I mean by that. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm just gonna pick a. I'm just gonna pick a listing real quick. All right. So if I pull up this listing here, okay, and I'm on the first first page of the contract, and I say, "What's the, what's the seller's name?" You're gonna come right over here to Monsoon, and here's your property owner's name right here, okay. Um, so this is going to tell you where they have it, okay? And then um, it's also going to tell you your legal description and the full legal description, okay? So these are this is a really good tool um, to use as tax records. Again, you can see kind of where it is in the neighborhood and and what the plot map is and everything else like that, okay? Um, so that's monsoon. Monsoon is very very good, uh, like I said, to identify. Uh, who, who's on there and stuff. Now, if if we're on a report as well, so this is a detailed report of this home, you can look at the history. So the history allows you, if you come over here to this plus, it allows you to see exactly what's been going on with this property. So you can see like uh, price reductions, you can see open houses, you can see status change, fallout dates, you can see everything that there was with this listing. So in this case, what I see here is I see new and I see documents. So I know that now when I submit an offer to this property, I know now I need to go into the documents tab because they have something in there. So in this case, they have the HOA disclosure and the solar lease, okay? So we know that you know this property has an HOA, it's already filled out. And this here is what we're going to send in with our offer. Um, So if I exit out of that here, this has a solar lease on there. So this would be good to know for your clients, guys. So it looks like they pay $149.72 a month for their first year. And typically on a solar lease, okay, it's always going to increase, always going to increase. Um, but they're usually 20 years. And you can see that up here for 20-year lease. And then you can come down here and you can show your buyers. All right, you guys, hey, this is what you can expect to pay in your solar lease. And then after those 20 years, they're typically renegotiable. Um, so you got your report here, you got your history, here's where you can access your monsoon. You can do your neighborhood documents, calculator. Um, this is really cool, but do not get yourselves in hot water for this, guys, okay? You are a real estate professional, you help clients buy and sell real estate investment properties things like that but do not become a lender okay do not say here's your purchase price here's your down payment here's your interest rate i can promise you that you're going to pay twenty eight hundred dollars a month use this as a use this as a tool to help you not put yourself in hot water so if a client says you know what do you think a price would be on this Okay, you can come in here and you can do a, a mortgage calculator and you can say, well, based on the mortgage calculator, you know, you're going to be around here, but I would require, or I would request that you talk to George, Ricky, or your lender um, and get that actual price on there. Okay, um, so that's what your mortgage calculator, calculator is there for. Um, now, really important. Okay, I have the MLS. I just searched this property. I found four that I really want to go show. How do I go show a home? I just got this question asked yesterday. How do I even access a home? Perfect, all right? You're on your report tab and you come over here to showing time. Showing time is our electronic record 
that allows us to schedule showings. Okay, so now I have this property here. It's gonna give you your first name, your last name, the company you're with. Okay, this is our phone number, email, and I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna schedule a single showing. Now the black, if you see black, that means that the property is unavailable during that time. Now, in, in, in this case, it's just because this time has expired. But if you see this on like a, if it's Tuesday and you see this on like a Thursday and a Friday, they either don't want showings that time or they're already showing scheduled at that time, okay? So um, you simply just click in a box. So let's say we wanna show this house at two o'clock. We're just gonna click one time in that box. So we are scheduling October 18th at 2 p.m. It's a showing. I always do a 30 minute showing for two reasons. If the people love the house, they're gonna spend more time in that house. And there could be someone that's waiting to, to come in and view the home after us, or this allows us a little bit more time, you know, to, to talk about home, to talk about, you know, you know, is this the house for you? If not, you know, so it just gives us a little bit more time um, to do. Now, let's just say our, our start time was at 2 p.m. and we got stuck at the red light and we actually showed up at 2.15, okay? We're still within our showing time limit. And then now we just bought ourselves an extra little bit of time by allowing us 30 minutes, okay? And then you just hit right here, request appointment. That will shoot them over a message. And then you most likely will get an email that says your showing time was confirmed. If you have a listing, you're going to get a phone call from showing time. It's an 877 number. It's gonna say, you have a new showing request. Hit one to confirm. And you can hit one right there on your phone if, if you're the showing agent, okay? All right, showing time, search comparables. Um, we're gonna have a whole entire another monsoon, or monsoon, I'm sorry, a <laughs> boot camp. We're gonna have a whole entire another boot camp that covers comps. Um, I don't ever use this tab at all. Um, I, I, I just don't like it. I search comparables. Um, when I do a quick search, I, I do comparables that way, um, but I guess you can use this tab. Um, it, it's totally up to you, but when you are looking at comps, do what we say to do your comps because I promise you it'll just be the right way. Um, but those are pretty much all your tabs here that you have on your specific detailed report of the home, okay? So now what do we, we say, all right, we wanna get back to our search, just go to edit search. And then in this case, we just pick this, this tab. So I'm just gonna close this tab and I'm gonna come back to the valley, okay? All right, um, you can also enter MLS numbers up here or you can search addresses, cities, uh, state, zip. You can do all that up here. Um, when you are searching, you can put multiple MLS numbers in here. So, you know, just put your, you know, I'm just gonna make one up right now. And then you're gonna hit comma and then you're going to go ahead and you're gonna search another one and then hit comma. Then you're gonna go ahead and, oops. You're gonna go ahead and hit another one and hit comma. And then that's how you can search multiple MLS numbers. So uh, if, if uh, for instance, your client calls you and says, hey guys, I was up all night on Zillow and I just found all of these great MLS numbers. I just fell in love with 20, 25 homes. Can you please look every single one of them up? You can put all the MLS numbers in here. And if they found them on Zillow, nine times out of 10, they're gonna be pending or under contract or something like that. Um, but just put them through in here and then the active ones will, will pull up and then you can go from there, okay? Um, so that pretty much wraps up uh, MLS. That pretty much uh, uh, shows you everything that you can do with the MLS. Um, just to recap, if you come over here, if you have your search criteria all done, you can come right over here and you can save your search. Okay, you can email your search, you can share your search, uh, you can print. So if you have an open house and, and let's just say that you picked one of your, one of your tabs, uh, one of your homes here, then you can come right up here to print and that's going to print. Now, um, I do wanna show you guys something really, really, really quick because you can get in a little bit of hot water if you guys don't pay attention to this. So, I'm just gonna put my circle in. 
do the results, I'm just gonna pick a house. Wheel of death. All right. Let's whoops. Let's just start over. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pick one real quick, guys. All right. So if I'm deciding that I want to go ahead and I want to do this as an open house, or if I'm printing these planos out for my buyer and I'm going to show, when you come up here to print, okay, you can see here this version. You see how it says public, okay? This public is the one that we want to give our buyers, our clients. It doesn't matter what client they are, a seller, a buyer. We want to give them the public version. The reason why if we give them the private version, it has lockbox code numbers, it has gate code numbers, it has alarm codes on there, and we cannot we cannot give this out by any means. Um, if you guys give this out, and David, correct me if I'm wrong, you can actually get in a lot of trouble for this stuff. Um, so, just be on your on your best lookout to just do the public version. Now, when I'm out showing homes. I will print public versions of all the homes that we're going to go see for my buyers. I will print me, the agent, a private version for myself. So if we're out in the field, I need to know what the gate code is. I need to know what the alarm code is. I need to know what that stuff is. Now I have that information for me, okay? Um, but always make sure, always make sure that you, um, print the public out for your clients, okay? That's the most important thing that you can do. Also, when you're on printing, and check this out, check this feature out. Um, so um, let's, just, let's just narrow this down even more. So, and did you guys know that if you have a circle, you can actually do a circle within a circle to even narrow it down? So now I have 32. And then now I say, oh, I just want to, I just want to get these five. Now you can do like a little polygon within that circle, within that circle to, to, to narrow it down even more. Okay. So now I just want to focus on this polygon. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of the circles. And now, now I'm focusing on just that. So now I say, okay, I see these six homes. I'm going to go out and show these six homes today watch this this is really cool you guys so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to print all six homes if you come down here to uh, map and if you print combined maps check out cool this is preview now it says hey hey buyer now you know exactly where we are going on the on for this the this home tour so then it maps all the homes out on one map for them and then you give them a pin and you say, okay, you guys, we're going to go to, to home number six, and then we're going to work backwards. So then we're going to go to two, five, three, four, and we're going to end at one. And then they can correlate these numbers to the planos that they have. And then it, after you're showing, okay, hey, buyers, did you like this showing or did you like this home? No. Okay. Do me a favor, grab your pin and put an X right through that number. So now when they get home, now they're not confused. Now they know where the ones with the X, the ones that they love, they circle. Oh, I know that I loved one and four. Okay, well, you guys have the planos. You guys have your notes on the back of those. You know, and then at the house, you know, when you end at one and you one and four, okay, well, based off of one and four, which house do you feel meets your criteria the best? Okay, great. Let's go ahead and put an offer in. Always ask for the sale. I don't get off topic, but what I what I'm just trying to show you is through flex you can do so much cool stuff okay all right um i i would never i would never print out the photos because you guys will waste so much paper so just do map combined and then your detailed report and then hit print so um that's another cool thing that you can do through mls um does anybody have any questions regarding uh, the mls or anything that we just kind of talked about
Yeah, I have a question. <clears throat> What's up, Hailey? Uh If I am um, in an open house and somebody wants to see a house, let's say close by, how soon do I get the response back to go and show the other house? Yeah, other so you agent? can just. So you can do two things, okay? If you meet someone at open house and, and you say, okay, I narrowed down the valley. We found three homes that you want to go look at right now. I'm on the phone with that listing agent. Hey, listing agent. Hey, I just met this person at my open house. They actually want okay. to go search your, or they want to go look at your home. I'm going to go ahead and do a showing time request, but is it okay if I, if I, you know, come in an hour now, always remember. Oh, and I also do want to show you guys uh, one other thing real quick. Um, so pay attention to this. I just talked to an agent yesterday and, um, this is a very easy way to piss off. A lot of people, um, is not following the private remarks. Okay. So if I go ahead and let's just, I'm just going to pick a home and I'm, I'm going to hope. Oh, and, and another thing, check this out, guys. So say, say you yield, say you yield 30 properties and you're like, all right, um, you know, how do I even search these? You can search by price. So you can do descending or ascending. So you can start with the nicest of the nice going down, or you can start with a sort ascending, which is going from the, you know, the cheapest to the nicest. I always start at the nicest going down just because I love to search that way. Um, so here, so, so. Let's just come over here to like a normal home if we were going to go show. Okay, so we're going to go show this home. This detail tab right here. Okay, private remarks. Look, occupied. Occupied. Please use showing time request showing. Text co-listing agent for questions. Sunrun solar lease. Okay, 25-year lease. Currently in year six. So um, if you meet somebody at an open house and you, and you sit all right, yeah, I want to go look at this house. Make sure that you come down to the to the remark tabs and just make sure that it doesn't say like, give us a two hour notice, dogs, little kids, you know, things like that. So that's what you're going to want to look at highly. And if you got the green light, call that agent. Hey, I got an agent. No agent's going to say, no, I don't want you to show my property because we're all in it to, to, um, to sell homes, you know, to sell the home. So a great okay. question. It doesn't have to be in writing request though. It could be a phone call. It's good enough. Yeah, yeah. A, okay. a phone call, a phone call, you know, uh, most likely they're going to use showing time. When you do showing time, if you're the listing agent, okay, you're going to get uh, on your behalf, sent out a feedback sheet for your listing. If you're a buyer, you're going to receive a feedback sheet from showing time. There's five questions. It says, what do you think of the property? are they gonna are they interested you know are they gonna make an offer is it priced right you know something else and something else as a buyer's agent please fill those out and send them back to a listing agent because they can get a lot of feedback from that as you guys are a listing agent you can go now go take that to your homeowner and say hey homeowner look this is the feedback they love the house we're in a great position it's priced right now you look like a hero okay that's done through showing time so again that's not Really through the MLS showing time is, but you're going to get a feedback form. Fill those out for the agents. Remember, we're all in the we're all in this for the same reason, right? To sell and buy real estate. Okay, let's help each other out. You know, uh, give that feedback. Um, you know, it takes literally two minutes to 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 send that feedback in. So yeah, great question, Hailey. Josh, I have a question. I'm going to mute you for a second. Set on echo. Um, what would be a good homework assignment? So like a nice challenge for anyone who hasn't played with the MLS or who hasn't done some of the steps in there, what would you say like two things like you have to do today that if you've never done um, after today's boot camp? A very, very good question. Um, what I would do for all of you guys for homework is I would call, I would go to whatever area you want to become that professional in, whether it's surprise, you know, whether it's in um, Scottsdale, Gilbert, Chandler, Ahwatukee, I would literally go on there and I would look up how many active listings you currently have, how many pending, how many closed, how many closed in the last 30 days, what's the average price point that are closed? Because when you're having these conversations through your community, okay, at the grocery store, 
you know, maybe with your bank teller, maybe with your kids, par- you know, your kids, friends, parents. Okay. This is all going to come out organically, naturally. And I always tell my buyers or my sellers or anybody who I talk to really agents, if, if you can, if you can back up what you just said and you can validate that and the buyers or whomever, whomever you're talking to can validate that everything that you say on is going to be automatically validated because you just proved that you are, are telling the truth. So you're going to come off like a professional. All right. Uh, I, I'm going to give a, a story of what happened to me about three weeks ago. I was at a party. Um, it was our neighbors. Uh, she just turned 54 and they, they brought in a bartender and I was just, you know, shooting a, shooting a breeze with them. And I said, oh yeah, you know, I am a realtor. Uh, I could really use a drink, <laughs> you know, uh, just because we're out hustling all day. And he goes, oh, you're a realtor, which by the way, Every conversation, if you are not telling people you're a realtor, you're doing a disservice to yourself. Every single conversation. Hi, my name is Calvin. I'm a realtor. Hi, my name is Hailey. I'm a realtor. Okay. You know, hi, my name is Brandon. I am a realtor. Just flat out do that. Okay. So fast forward, he says, oh, you're a realtor. I've been trying to sell my house for the past five months. I can't. Okay. And I, organically, I just said, oh, where's your house at? Surprise. Funny because I just did a buyer um, a MLS a training in my um, in my uh, daily huddle. By the way, you guys should be on that at nine o'clock in the morning. It's really really fun. Um, but I just happened to be doing that uh, a buyer kind of like a tutorial on the MLS in surprise, right where his house was. And I was like, his number one rebuttal was nobody's buying homes right now. And I said, well, that's funny. His name is John. I said, John. Actually, in surprise, in the last 30 days, 94 homes closed. I said, six of which are in surprise farms. And he goes, really? He goes, would you mind coming over to my house? Now, I don't do production anymore. So I went on a listing presentation because I was going to get that listing and you know give it to one of my buyers. But just because I was on the MLS, I live in surprise. I care to know what's going on in surprise. I had an organic conversation with this guy. I validated what I was saying with numbers. I didn't didn't make this stuff up, right? Every single thing I said after that, he was like, and his jaw was like, what? You could do that for me? And come to find out, you know, his, his agent has the house significantly overpriced, did not do one open house in 92 days it's been on the market. Not one open house, okay? All right, this is agent. She's a home smart agent. And I really think it's against the law what she's doing, but I don't know. So she basically said, if I sell your home, I will give you special incentives if you buy my home in Marley Park. And they're like, oh my God, yeah, like I'm going to do this. So you're going to just continue to sell my house, which she's not. It's going to stay on the market. And then what I'm hoping is her house in Marley Park gets an offer because then they're going to call me and say, hey, you know, thank you for being the hero. I'm ready to list with your buyer's team you know, it's going to end up what's happening. But the reason I say this is I became a master of surprise. I want to sell surprise. I want to buy surprise. That's where I focus all my time and energy on. So the takeaway is go become a master of your community. Go and go and find that area that you want to specialize in and become the, become the, the expert, know your actives, know your pendings, know your clothes, you know, know what their houses are selling for, know how many days on market there are. Yeah. And you should be looking at this daily, every single morning, cup of coffee, MLS, five minutes, learn your market, become the professional. Any okay. other questions? Oh. I was just going to say thank you. That was like a bonus um, golden nugget there. A lot of times agents network at the bars or the restaurants nearby. And as Josh always say, you want to pick an an area that you are a specialist in. And normally it's the areas that you want to advocate that you work in the most or areas you're going to farm. So that was a bonus for sure. But thank you. Um, Any last remaining questions? I think um, Brandon does. I got, we got a question. Can you hear us? Okay. Ask away, Rob. 
All right. This is kind of on the spot and I didn't like really think about it too much, but I see a lot of real estate agents going on Zillow and finding all these home properties. I want to know what the pros and cons are, the disadvantages and like why the MLS is like actually key or, or is it good to go on uh, Zillow or open door? Yeah. Hey, thank you, Rob. That's a great question. So um, I always tell my clients, you know, to go on Zillow because at the end of the day, if you tell someone not to do it, guess what? human philosophy is we're going to go do it, right? Adam and Eve, they, they were told not to go eat an apple. They went and ate the apple, right? It's just, that that's human nature, dude. Um, at the end of the day, you can go on Zillow. You can go and get those estimates. You can go do all that stuff, but you got to understand that Zillow is updated through our IDX, okay? So nine times out of 10, those homes on Zillow are on the MLS. But the key thing that Zillow can't do that MLS does or if they just choose not to do is we update the MLS like that, right? So it's real world time. The houses on the Zillow, they're still advertising homes that are closed, that are under contract, that are you know pending, things like that to get people enticed to get their information in because then they go and sell that information. That's how Zillow operates. They used to buy homes until they got themselves in a world of trouble. Now they don't do that no more, okay? And it's really cool that they got in trouble because then Open Door got in trouble and now the uh, iBuyer is going away. See you later, right? And then that just buyers. opens up you know, us in the market. So I tell my buyers, go on Zillow, go. If you find a property that you love, shoot me the MLS number because guess what? Those homes that I am telling you that are currently available right now that you just got a list of homes are gonna be on Zillow. You're gonna see that. But we can't sell homes that are on a Zillow website unless they're on the MLS. Okay. Or if they're off market property, we can go and find those two. We can sell those two, but nine times out of 10, the homes that you're going to go sell are going to be on the MLS. So um, I always say, Hey, shoot me over the MLS numbers. I'll go ahead and take a look at those. And if they're available, you know, most likely there will already be in the list that I sent you. And then that's kind of how you handle that. But I, I, encourage All right, Josh, them to go. I appreciate it. Thanks, sir. Hey, my pleasure, man. I encourage them to go on Zillow. Yeah. Yes, yeah, because you got to understand, man, you know, like my wife and I, I, I have access to the MLS, but I still love to lay in bed and look at Zillow. I mean, I love looking at, I love looking at home. And I don't blame you. It's another tool, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a different look. So it's like, you kind of get tired of the MLS a little bit because, you know, it's for realtors. It's a little bit more of a boring format, but it's got so much vast knowledge that like Zillow just cannot offer you. But it's like, then Zillow, it's like, it's, it's pretty to look at, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. And then, so here's, here's, so if I'm a real estate agent and I put a coming soon on, on the MLS at like eight o'clock at night, right? Like I put my kids to bed at like eight o'clock and now I'm, and now I'm on Zillow. They might, they might look at a coming soon that you haven't looked at yet. And they're, they're going to send it over to you and be like, yo, look at this coming soon. And you're going to be like, oh yeah, that's sure. awesome. You know? So at, at the end of the day, they're working for you by sending you properties you know that you're going to go out and show them so at the end of the day by all means they're going to go on zillow one way or another any other questions All right. Well, thanks, Josh. If you guys have any additional questions or want to book a chat with Josh, um, his link is in the chat box and you can call and email him anytime. But um, if you guys have any additional MLS questions, I do highly suggest stopping by that academy that they have up in that little corner link that he started because there's a lot of tools and resources. Every now and then, Mag uh, Best Home Strategy, Magnus, or um, Home Warranties, they offer free CE classes and the subject is MLS. So when you think you mastered it, you didn't. <laughs> but a lot of times, some of us winged it. Like we learned it the hard way. It's like we just kind of winged it. So we thank you. We can't thank you enough, Josh, because this is stuff and that we just kind of learn as we go. But if you're ahead of it, do the homework assignment or the challenge that he did so that you are that much more comfortable with it and you can leverage the tool to its fullest potential. But as Josh mentioned earlier, next week is on Transaction Desk with Lee Edwards, our, our success manager over in Prescott Valley. And he's going to dive deep into Transaction Desk, which is where we write the offers. So MLS is how we find houses, how we send houses, how we get all the information, monsoons, um, comps, all that jazz. 
but the transaction is where we actually write the offer, send offers, send documents to your clients to e-sign, and it's all entwined together in transaction desk. So stay tuned for next week at 11 a.m. with Lee Edwards. But thanks again, Josh. Thank you all who attended today's boot camp, and we'll talk to you all soon. And then tomorrow, don't forget, here at the office, it's a 1031 exchange free CE class um, sponsored by Best Rate Home Loans and um, Magnus Title. So free donuts and stuff as well, plus free C classes. And it's a lot of people are thinking of 1031 exchange. So if you don't know what that is, I have like no idea what it is. And it's an MLS option if you represent sellers. And so it's kind of important to know. And I would highly suggest attending the three hour course tomorrow here at the Glendale office. But enjoy your day, guys. Talk to you soon.